but it's hard to understand actual doctors that you go to that that have no idea about it and and don't know what to do about it and tell you it's all in your head and there's really nothing wrong with you. Dorothy, get dressed. You're fine. I beg your pardon? We've run every test known to man. They're all normal. You can get dressed, go home, enjoy your life. But, uh, Dr. Stevens, I was always healthy and then I, I came down with this flu. I can't get rid of it. I've been sick for five months now. I have a constant sore throat swollen glands, fevers, my muscles ache and are weak. I am totally exhausted all the time. I know, I know, you told me. Well, maybe it bears repeating. And at a certain point when you've um, shown up negative on enough tests, suddenly the demeanor towards you changes. Suddenly you're not a gravely ill patient who they are worried is about to die. Suddenly you're a problem patient. Look, uh, Dorothy, can I ask you a personal question? Yes. You're divorced. Yes. How's your um, social life? Do you uh, do you see men? <laughs> what in the world does seeing men have to do with anything? Oh, Dorothy, we know for a fact that if people are not happy, and lonely people aren't, oh. but they get all kinds of symptoms. Depressed. And as they're unable to get a resolution of a positive um, result to a test they were expecting to be positive, then they uh, displace their frustration towards a patient. Uh, they told me at that time I, I was suffering from a bad attitude. Uh, and I kept trying to tell them it wasn't a bad attitude. I passed bad attitude about five years ago. Okay. The doctors, when I started having these seizures, they'd make a call on me that I was a drug addict or an alcoholic. And one doctor said to me when I complained of a swollen gland under my arm, he said, well, you know, maybe your bra's a little too tight not thinking that in 34 years I might have been able to figure that out myself. I bought all the clippings in and said, gee, these sound like me. Oh, I have all of these symptoms. And um, they said, I don't believe this exists. This is my son, Kalen. Both of us have CFIDs. He had severe headaches and uh, severe abdominal pains. And his pediatrician finally said, I think he may be having some school phobia problems. I mean, poor chronic fatigue patients have been treated shabbily you have to say that they've been shunted from doctor's office to doctor's office being told everything's in their head like the same thing with my teachers I would look fine so they would really think that I was not sick people don't believe them this is the cause of the greatest long-term uh, damage that this illness causes especially in children all in all I've seen 212 physicians 210 of them did not believe me Two did. 210 told me I was crazy, and I never gave up. If anyone found themselves kidnapped, trapped in a room, drugged, and put in a bed and left in a room for five years, that they would have media attention that was phenomenal. Everyone in the world would be screaming for their release, and there are so many people who live in this situation how many Americans are held hostage by CIFIDs? Estimates range from 100,000 to 5 million. Since 1985, the CDC has been conducting a surveillance survey, but after eight years, has made no report. So no one really knows. Many experts believe CIFIDs is not new. It's just gone by different names. Today, CIFIDS is called myalgic encephalomyelitis in England and low natural killer cell disease in Japan. Many experts believe there may have been over 60 CIFIDS epidemics in this century alone. But others think CIFIDS is a new disease or that it suddenly has become more widespread since the early 1980s but no one really knows. Some experts estimate up to 80% of people with CIFIDs are women. Again, no one knows. I see an incredibly wide variety of patients um, with CIFIDs. Um, uh, a wide age group, I, I've, se I've seen people as young as five years old um, with suspicion of CIFIDs. Um, I see people well into their 60s with CIFIDs. We did a training at San Francisco General Hospital, which is a county hospital and treats a lot of poor people. 
um, their um, intake nurses and, and nurse practitioners thought that all people with syphilis were poor people, people of color, because that's who they were seeing. I've been in support group about six to seven years now, and I've been the only black, uh, and I've been very curious about that. You know, as far as a lot of minorities are concerned, especially um, minorities of lower incomes, aren't going to continue to see different doctors until they find somebody who will diagnose them adequately. However diverse its victims, syphids can devastate their lives. I was teaching classical ballet, and I was extremely active. I had my own dance company, uh, and I was... Uh, I was a glamorous, happy, uh, outgoing, cheerful person. I had absolutely no reason to want to stay in bed for five years, which is what happened to me. Is that me? I've written a lot of award-winning poetry, and I have trouble writing, spelling correctly now, oftentimes my own name on a check. I'll sign N-A-R-Y, Nary, for Nancy. Uh, how can I write? I was very athletic. I was a runner. I was a long-distance runner. I ran half marathons and races, um, and I'd always been healthy. I've got five pairs of skis sitting in my closet and at home, and hockey gear and windsurfing sails and mountain bikes just sitting there. You know, I don't want to sell them because I'm going to get better get better or die trying. What happened to my dancing? How about what happened to my walking? <laughs> Everything's different now. I'm a disabled person. I was a healthy person. People with syphids aren't the only ones affected. Syphids is hard on the entire family. Kim's husband is very supportive, but he is carrying around a rage you just cannot believe. And when it surfaces, it, um, he just explodes. This is, this is very common with CFIDS. So often we see um, people with this disease, uh, typically women, who are cast aside um, by their husbands, even by their parents, and they're, they're en they end up totally isolated because nobody believes they're really sick. As if loss of health, job, family, and friends weren't enough, there is the enormous cost of this disease. I'm barely skimping by. I've, I lost my house, I lost my job, I lost my self-esteem. I lost my legal practice. I had to file bankruptcy and lost my automobile and all of my assets during, during the bankruptcy. I ended up, when in warm weather, I ended up living in my little car with my dog. I have lost everything I've worked for my whole life. I have spent the last six years being housebound. I no longer grocery shop. I no longer do laundry. I no longer pay bills. I'm not a functioning human being. I know from personal experience that this is a devastating disease. There, there is nothing that you cherish that this disease cannot take away from you. Absolutely nothing. Your career, your identity, your reason for living, how can it be that so many Americans must suffer so greatly? How in this information age is it possible that not only the average American citizen, but the average American doctor knows so little about a disease that some experts call the AIDS of the 90s? CIFID's advocates blame the name given the disease by the Centers for Disease Control and the National Institutes for Health. Sometimes, you know, I want to call it chronic fear syndrome instead of chronic fatigue. Because chronic fatigue sounds like, just take me to Oprah and put, give me the bonbons. And the illness is not like that at all. The name that this disease has been given in this country is trivializing. We have a joke amongst the CIFIDS community, both patients and providers, I think, uh, that we need to get the F word out of the chronic fatigue immune dysfunction syndrome. Uh, the F word is a little bit like describing diabetes as the chronic peeing disease. Of course, people who have diabetes pee a lot, but the disease covers so much more and includes so many other symptoms that it, it really does not do the disease justice. 
The same is true for chronic fatigue syndrome. And that has greatly hampered our efforts to be taken seriously by anybody, the media, our families, the press, uh, the medical profession. But the name is only part of the problem. SIFIDS has a history of halting recognition by the medical establishment. The American Medical Association has made equivocal statements at best. And research at the National Institutes for Health has concentrated on proving SIFIDS to be a psychoneurotic ailment. The leading SIFIDS investigator at NIH, Stephen Strauss, refused to be interviewed. Only recently has the NIH acknowledged the immune abnormalities present in SIFIDS patients. Consequently, few doctors are adequately prepared to recognize or treat SIFIDS patients.